Um, I'll call the meeting of the Oaks Public School Bo uh, Board to order. It is uh, Tuesday, November 17th at 7 a.m., 7.59. We're in the Oaks Public Schools Conference Room and via Zoom. We'll stand to play the, say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, this is a special meeting. Um, we have two items on our agenda. The first item is a cheat sheet here. Um, the first item on the agenda is the teacher grievance. Uh, this item may be discussed in an executive session and a legal authority for closing this portion of the meeting is North Dakota Century Code section 4404-19.2. Uh, the topic or purpose of the executive session is attorney consultation. Um, so I am seeking a, uh, if, if the board desires, I'm seeking a, a motion to enter into executive session to discuss this first agenda item. I'd make a motion to enter executive session. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Bill Schmitz and seconded by Robert Thorpe uh, to move to enter into an executive session of the board uh, to discuss the teacher grievance, which was um, a matter of detail. I'm just going to use uh, April's language here that she sent me. Um, uh, filed the grievance was filed by Captain Heimbach in July of 2020. It requires further action from the board. Mediators have returned their review of the grievance and did not provide a solution. The next steps in the process may be discussed in an executive session. And again, the legal authority. Uh, for closing the meeting of Century Code Section 4404-19.1, uh, and the, the purpose is attorney consultation. Again, it was motioned by Bill Schmidt, seconded by Robert Thorpe, to discuss the matter in an executive session rather than an open an open meeting. Uh, April, will you call the roll for that motion, please? Yep. Um, Ryan, or sorry, Rosendahl? Yes. Nagel? Yes. Thorpe? Yes. Schmidt? Yep. Meal? Yes. Uh, motion passes five to zero, and uh, we will enter into executive session. Um, board members, we need to decide who uh, we want to have in our executive session. Um, and clearly, we would like uh, Dr. Steinhoff. Is it, do you, are you suggesting that we include Mrs. Self this morning? Well, Mrs. Sells has been part of the grievance yeah. from the okay. beginning, so that makes sense okay. to me to have her included. And yes. uh, uh, April, as well as our attorney, Amy. Other than that, we'll have to, if, unless there's anyone else, um, we will uh, then close the open portion of the meeting, and April can, uh, I believe, effectively remove others that are, are on. And then I will record. Um, so we have a recording of the uh, executive session. All right. Uh, and does Larry Engel, um, is is he like? He's out. Us? He's us? Or he's out? He's, he's out. OK, what about? OK, so and Kylie Murphy. Can be yep, so Oaks Post Schools is us, and then we have April. Lee. OK, so are we are secure in our executive session at this time? Yep. All right, so executive session is beginning now at 7.03 a.m. Uh, being recorded and I remind board members, the minutes will show that the executive session began at 7.03 and ended at 7.54 a.m. Uh, was adjourned at uh, 7.54 a.m. Uh, and the public is now being invited to return to the meeting room or return to our, uh, our Zoom meeting. So is everyone back in April that was in the waiting room? Okay, you're muted, but that's okay. I can see your head. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Kids I, I are getting ready for school in the background. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, 
All right, board, we are now back into open session and the next item on our agenda is the Oak Public Schools restart plan. Thank you, Mrs. Self. Have a good day. I'm, I'm not sure. I, what, what should we do on this? <laughs> I'll bring up what I when I brought this to Craig and wanted this on the agenda is how is right now are done till December 14th with yeah. sports activities it, it appears I mean there's a lot of petitions and people are upset I understand it's I said I've said many times I want to be in this position <coughs> okay December 15th we start back up again and we're able to have wrestling and, and drama and basketball we all went through it we don't need to dis discuss it but if someone in your home is being tested for COVID. That means that whole home's gonna get quarantined, that whole house will get tested. If someone is participating, a student is participating in sport, activity, whatever it is, and someone in their household is being tested due to symptoms for COVID, I would like it in our policies that that person refrains from coming to school and, and being part of that activity. Well, they're supposed to. But it's not in there. That's oh, wait. Okay. So let's back up. Yep. This is exactly what Bill brought to me that he wanted to discuss today. Um, April had brought that to me in an email about a week prior to that. And April, have you reviewed um, where, you know, how had this evolved? Well, I believe originally we had, if you're, if you are a family member of your household have a pending COVID-19 due to symptoms or possible exposure, then you must stay home. Um, and then it got brought up of well, what about healthcare workers, um, different things like that. And so it just kind of went away. Um, and so we didn't, we don't have it on our checklist for the mornings or for the students and staff. Uh, but as I explained to Sonia and Craig, William, um, you know, he was pending test and it took seven days to get that back. Um, before we found out that he was positive. So me and my whole family were out for seven days, potentially exposing more people than necessary. Um, but yeah, but I'm not sure why, why that came off as a household member. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And I don't find anything on the North Dakota Department of Health website that has any, I guess, regulations regarding this, besides if you have a pending test yourself. I, I can tell you what happened. We had in the original document and so it stated, one of the questions was, do you or anyone in your household have a pending COVID test? If the answer is yes, then stop, everybody stays home. The North Dakota Department of Health though, had, a, had an update that happened some point in time that changed. And I told Carrie, I said, our guidance says that we're following North Dakota Department of Health. We took that question out so that it only says, do you have a pending uh, COVID test? And so we had it, it got taken out uh, and it's not been in there Yes, but that it, it wasn't the original. And our yes. discussion was the, like the healthcare workers or the guards. Because they're being know, tested routinely. Yeah. Yeah. This we, is because you think you have symptoms. There's right. a reason, like, oh, you need to test because if of a household member yeah. has symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, is it is the direction we're going here to simply make the change to whatever part of our restart plan is required to consider adding that back in? That, well, it should be considered and discussed. Okay, so, um, and and where would we put it? Would it be on the, on the school, section. on the daily checklist? Okay. We have to make sure though too, because there's another checklist for employees. April, can you pull that one up? That, that one does not, that one is only about four questions. It's in a, it looks like a table format. Your lips Hold on, it's, <laughs> it's on the restart or, yeah, it's on our website. It's, there's one of those links there for employees, the uh, the employee checklist. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is what we would use to the Department of Health. So this is for this is for people that are working for us in the school. There's only those four questions. Or did the employee have close contact with a person who has tested positive? So not who is being tested due to <coughs> symptomatic or, or 
for reason. Yep. Add language in there, do we'll right next to the test of positive slash or pending non-routine COVID-19. Yeah. And um, would it make any difference that teachers and or other staff are deemed now essential? I mean, does that make a difference that well, they could, would not would or would not have? It, it could make a difference. Now? I can tell you that I've not I've not granted anyone permission to come back early and not follow any quarantine guidelines. I've had that request um, and said, you know, you could deem me essential and say, we need you back here now because you're, you know, you, you shouldn't be in quarantine, but we've not, I've not uh, granted any of that. I mean, everything, everybody that's been given quarantine orders, they've been required to follow them before coming back to school, so. And is that quarantine orders due to con or close contact or is that quarantine orders due to them being positive once they have Requested. The positive would be isolation. So right. uh, the, these would be uh, quarantined people that are quarantined that are either household contacts or were deemed a close contact. All right, we've had a lot of discussion. And so can we clarify what 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 is our motion at this point? Um, so we can hone in on that and maybe have further discussion. Thank you, eliminate. Oh, great point. William has a test, and you're out there for seven days. And we're, we're, we're doing this test because we think we have symptoms, not because we're working for the hospital or the man. So okay. I really think we need to eliminate so, that risk. So can you put the, the daily questionnaire back up and then so we can specifically craft a motion with and say, so, um, oh, okay, here we go. Um, so, so are we suggesting that on the last question, does your child have a pending COVID-19 test? Do, or, or does your child or anyone in their household have a non-routine? No, does, is, do I say the due to possible exposure kind of takes care of that, don't you think? Well, right. but a, a, a health, a, a long-term care worker is, being tested due to possible exposure every time they're tested because it's right. there uh, due to symptoms. Due to symptoms. Due to symptoms. That's why you're that's why you're non routine, I think. Non -routine. Is it's, that I think sufficient? It's symptomatic because that's why this happened was we knew there was one and then it escalated. Uh, so non routine or symptomatic or, or a test is because it wouldn't be just okay well they're having a mass testing in our town so i guess i'll just go mm -hmm. that's routine too. there's a reason this test was given uh -huh. because they don't feel well or something's up april would you have a suggestion as to what language we should uh use for this um i think we could just put the does your child or anyone in your household have a pending COVID test due to um be that's being fun. symptomatic yes their own symptoms. I like symptomatic. Yes, yeah, to be, be right. symptomatic. All right. Um, so, board members, uh, would someone like to make that motion? Should the motion also include, now that this is separate, so this is only our kids right. coming to school. Do you want to have a separate motion or do you want to deal with employees differently or the same motion, I guess, is the question I have. That's, that's, that's a question for the motion. I don't know why. Personally, if the teacher's feeling sick and the kid's feeling sick, the whole thing, I would say stay home. Or, the, or someone in their house? Yes. Yeah. Same thing, because obviously you've okay. been exposed. Okay, I, so, that, so now we want to go back to the, the employee checklist and, and, and get some language for that as well. The same language would be added to the employee question checklist. This form, yep. goes directly, this form goes directly to North Dakota Department of Health, so we'd have to add an addendum or something because it's not our form. Okay. Yeah, I can add that, have a, an additional page or um, somehow tweak this one. All right, um, so everybody, would somebody make a motion with what we want? I'll make the motion to uh, add the uh, restart plan with the clause we just talked about. Okay, Thorpe moves to add language to our restart plan. 
to the daily checklist for students and staff that um, if someone in their household, the student, the, the person or someone in their household is has a pending positive test due to symptoms. Put that in a, you know, a little bit more concise, but uh, Thorpe moves to adopt those changes to our restart plan. Is there a second? Schmidt's second. All right. So again, the, the, the board uh, wants it to be clear that we're not we're not speaking of routine tests in the healthcare setting, routine mass testing, only if a person in the household is uh, being tested for symptoms. If there's reason to believe they're sick. Yes. Um, and again, we're doing this to keep our kids and our staff, I mean, granted in the short term, this is keeping kids home, but in the longer term, we're hoping to identify uh, positive cases and, and reduce spread within our buildings. Stop the shutdown of education, yep. as well as yes. those important other uh, educational activities. All right, is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Everything clear, April? That you can you can do that for us. All right. Um, hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All aye. right. Those opposed, say no. The motion passes. Um, I will. Oh, can I, I tell yes, you. Robert. It's not directly related, but it just ties in. So, how are they handling if a teacher actually tested positive? Now they're back in school. Can they be a close contact for 90 days and have to go home again? Or are they saying they can stay in school then after that? If they come. I don't know. We've had that specifically happen yet. But I think that I think there'd be immunity for 90 days, but I'd have to get there. It is. is there? Okay, in so fact, you don't they don't have to do this. Don't have to wear a mask. But okay. Everyone does. Yep. Yep. So you you still have to wear a mask. But according to the health district, you have a 90 day immunity. So you would not be considered a close contact and required to quarantine due to exposure. But you still are required to wear masks. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? What, are we still to restart? Yes, that's yeah. the only other item on yeah. the agenda. Uh, question I have is, the governor's executive order is now different than what our restart plan states, states specifically for mask wearing, because our restart plan states you got to wear a mask or be six feet apart. So when we're telling kids either six feet apart or not, the governor's plan is not that. It's masking all times indoors, right? Yes. Do we want to change our restart plan to match the governor's executive order or not? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. <laughs> I'm not going there. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? I would just say that the School Boards Association and the Council of Educational Leaders had a joint uh, Zoom call. Yeah, Zoom call uh -huh. yesterday that um, I, Craig was, you were in it. I think Anna was on it. Um, and addressing masks and activities and I did I attended I took a few notes and you know that one of the things that really bugged me is that about three weeks ago maybe four now the um the, the weekly town hall focused on activities and the doctor that can a doctor that consults with high school activities association made the point that what they're learning from professional sports collegiate sports and high school sports that are still going on um is that the uh, spread is not happening at practices and at competitions. It's it's other things like team meals and you know team bonding and that kind of thing. And so what bugged me is that um, you know we're we're going ahead and shutting down these activities, which we think are important to our kids because and not because uh, despite that guidance that that's not where it's spreading and. Uh, Superintendent Basler was, um, you know, 
frustrated as well, but um, she made it clear that, you know, I think that the governor is looking at just this pause for a, a period of two incubation periods, two 14 day periods, not just activities, but everybody I think is expected to pull back, stay away as much as possible, only, you know, essential activities just to break the cycle to keep our hospitals open, to keep our long-term care uh, centers staffed, and to keep our school buildings open. Face-to-face. Face-to-face. And, you know, as, as much as we just like it, um, I, I was also encouraged that School Boards Association and, and others on the call um, said, you know, bring us feedback. And I did quickly. I sent an email after the meeting. Um, I think the effort is that, okay, so between now and December 14th, let's make some, let's get some clarity and decide, you know, what's gonna happen then on December 14th. Um, I have some hope that perhaps at least we can restart some practices before that, but I wouldn't, you know, that that's probably not gonna happen, but, um, you know, there, there are efforts to, to go to the governor and those that can make these decisions and say, you know, let's reconsider or let's consider and be ready to do this on December 14th rather than get to December 14th and go, okay, now what? So I guess I, I, I think we'll be kept posted. Frustrated? Yes. Um, disappointed? Yes. Let's let's make the best we can of it and be ready to hit the ground running with our all activities as best we can and accept what we have, what we cannot change very frustrating and it keeps showing how proof that the schools aren't the critters but yet they're the ones that suffer all right um any other comments on the restart plan if not thank you board members for your time and energy. Um, good meeting. I'll declare this meeting adjourned at 8 12.